Hey guys and gals, Polly Jr. here, and welcome back to the Long Dark Winter Mute Redux. And we're picking up right where we left off here. After the end of the last episode, we are on a river here heading down south toward Mystery Lake. We're going down to the Lake Gunshots Cabin. We have a note, we have a backpack, and now we're going to go find out what this uh, forest talker in the cabin is going to do. So, yeah, this is um, this will be the culmination of the Lake Gunshots side quest. I have no idea what's going to happen. I've never done this before. This is the first time, but I am very curious. <laughs> We are super heavy. We're at 104 pounds out of 77 maximum capacity after having looted the, uh, what did we loot? We looted a lot in the last couple of episodes. We went from here all the way up to the logging camp, a couple of trailers, actually three trailers, then the Carter Hydro Dam, and then on the way down here we found a cache, and now we're going to go back down to the cabin. And uh, I think we, we picked up a key, too, in the last episode, right? For cabin number... Was it cabin number two? I think it was cabin number two. I'm not sure exactly which cabin that is down here. But we found it on a, uh, a body, frozen body, by a uh, hunting stand. So he must have been one of the people vacationing here. Or, well, maybe not vacationing. <laughs> I think the vacations around here have been over for a while. And what happened to all the wolves? There was a pack of wolves on here. The last time we came through, there were at least three or four of them all kind of wandering around looking for a tasty morsel. I guess they're all gone, unless they're on the other side of the hill here. So we got more cabins down there. We're going to have to discover, figure out which one is number two. I know at least one or two of them were locked going back a couple of episodes. But, first things first, we got to get to that cabin, uh, that cabin right there. That's where the forest talker has locked himself inside. And he sent us off to go gather this evidence for, for some reason. I don't know where... Oh, there's a deer. Okay. Thought that might have been a wolf, but yeah, no wolves around. Very interesting. I guess they all left. Migrated. Ooh, you know what? Let me check my clothing. Holy smokes! We're soaked through! <laughs> it's been snowing all day. Sun is now... looks like it's going down. So, as soon as we finish this up, this mission here with the guy in the cabin, and then we'll loot cabin number two, whichever one it is, we'll head over to um, camp office, get reorganized. We've got so much loot we've got to go through. And of course, we'll uh, we'll get a fire going. We'll cook some dinner, dry the clothing off, and uh, then we'll hit the sack and get ready to move all uh, move off in the morning. I don't know exactly where we're gonna go yet. Might depend on what happens here. But of course, ultimately, the main quest is to go back to the muskeg and get radio parts for Jeremy, for Jeremiah. Um so that he can fix up his radio. And then, uh, well, and then we figure out what, what to do from there. I don't really know. <laughs> but that means going to the muskeg, which is over here, and there's a whole bunch of radio towers. And, oh, the Aurora Hatch, right? I forgot about the Aurora Hatch. I think we can only open that during the Aurora. And then we have another tower down here. So there's at least, uh, oh, wow. Looks like there's three towers? Three towers. And that entire time we're there, I think we're going to be beset upon by the big hungry demon bear. So we're going to have to be prepared for that, obviously. All right, come on, Will. We're almost there, buddy. Unfortunately, Will cannot sprint. So that's why I'm walking painfully slowly here. All right, let's put the gun down, Will. Come in peace. Hey, buddy. We got your thing. I've got your supplies and those documents you wanted here. Hey, that's great. Thank you. But... I hope you understand if I ask you to just leave them outside the door. Uh, leave what outside the door? Drop supplies, drop supplies, take ammo. What? <laughs> okay, yeah, we did pick up a backpack, some kind of a special backpack. 
at the trailer at the uh, logging camp. So it looks like there's ammo in the bag, maybe? We could go through the bag. I don't know what was in the bag. We just picked it up. So it looks like we can take the ammo out of the bag. Well, do we want to do that? I mean, it seems like this guy could use some ammo. I mean, how he's going to defend himself. Although I am worried he's going to turn on us with the gun. I don't want to take his ammo. We're going to give him the ammo and let him defend himself. Right. I'll uh, leave it all here for you, just like you asked. Thank you, stranger. You may not care, but you've made a huge difference to our cause. Uh, oh boy. That doesn't sound good. Oh, there's the backpack right there. <laughs> now can we get in? Hey, you still alive in there? Yeah, I'm still weak. Gonna rest up here until I'm ready to move on. <laughs> He's not coming out. I was hoping we could meet this guy. But I guess that's not part of the story. Yeah, I don't know if giving him the, um... Dang it. I don't know if giving him the ammunition was the right thing. Now, are we done with this thing? Like gunshots. Check on the lake tomorrow. Oh, we're going to come back again tomorrow? What? Oh, come on. I thought we were done with this. <laughs> so we, need, we don't even know what's going to happen until tomorrow. Well, I hope he's not going to use that ammunition to do something nefarious. I mean, there's really nothing... There's nothing he can do. Can he? I mean, it's not like he's gonna... I know he's, like, protesting against the dam and the damage it's doing to the area. At least that's what the forest talkers were doing, but... Yeah, that that's ancient history. There's nothing really for him to do. So I feel like giving him the ammo is the right thing to do so that he can at least protect himself against the, uh, the wolves and get out of here alive. Then again, he could use the ammo and turn the gun on us. But I really don't think he's coming out of there. <laughs> Or, option number three is he uses the ammo to uh, to leave this place behind. To leave this mortal coil, if you know what I mean. Because he can't hack it. Take that wood. I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. Let's go see if one of these cabins is cabin number two. I, I don't re recall. I know at least two more cabins were locked that we couldn't get into. We've got a key off one body. Uh, this one's unlocked. I'm hoping this is the locked one. I think there's one or two around the corner there, too, but I don't really want to go that far. I want to get back. Here we go. Yes, this one's locked, and the key works. Fantastic. This must be cabin number two. Hello? Anybody here? Just a fish. All right, let's put the gun down. This is a nice cabin. Kind of. It's got a bed. There's no fireplace, though. Uh, all right, let's start on the left-hand side. What is this? Combat pants. I think I can use this. Oh, yeah. Heavy-duty military pants with reinforced knees and articulated for good mobility designed to take a beating. Well, they look like they've taken a beating already, but we're going to take those. I don't know how those compare to what we're wearing, but we will do all that comparison stuff when we get back. Back to camp office. Take the little cow and sewing kit. Well, they're not that heavy. We'll grab it. Got so many sewing kits. Nice little trophy up there. A chalice of some kind. Dream catcher. Metal container here under the bunk. Should be good to drink. Looks good. Potable water. Can't pass that up, of course. Painkillers. Uh, I don't, I don't want to break that up. Paper. Oh, here's a note. Off-season fun. A letter found in one of the Mystery Lake campground cabins. Off-season fun. We're not supposed to go there off-season, but there's amazing hunting to be had near Mystery Lake. The warden usually shuts down the park for the winter. The cabins are meant for summer use, so bring warm clothes and a heavy sleeping bag. We'll break in, bag a few stags, then truck the meat out of there in a couple of weeks. Stan will pick us up the, along the old coastal highway. Meet me at the lake cabins on November XX. Come alone. Bring beers. <laughs> there's been logging in the area, so stay out of sight. Aha! Uh -huh. Grab that note. Yeah, okay, it's all coming together now. So that note right there must have been written by one of the fellas that this was handy. hunting. They were poaching, essentially, off-season hunting. And uh, that must have been the guy that we found, one of the frozen dudes. <gasps> Combat boots! Boots designed for war zones. Too bad they weren't made for winter. But we're going to take them anyway. We'll check them out. Salty crackers. I don't want the salty crackers. They're too salty. It's not good for you. 
Um, yeah, so we found that guy's body, and he had the... I'm going to bring those. He had the uh, key on him, so this must have been his cabin. But he had the key. They said they are going to break in and then go poaching. I don't know how he ended up with the key. Anyway, that's another mystery for another day, and I don't really care. I think we got everything we need here, right? There's no shelf or drawer here in the table. Oh, plastic container down here. Is it food or... Zagnut, ragged wool, air, wrap. Grab it. I'm going to take everything. As far as clothing goes, because we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to bring, we're going to have to wear different clothing than what we're accustomed to when we go to the muskeg because the bear is going to attack us and wreck it, essentially. All right, out we go. Let's get that gun up. Still snowing. It has been snowing all day, hasn't it? And we are getting soaked because of it. Look at this outer layer. Almost soaked all the way through. <laughs> and it doesn't look like this snow is letting up. Sure is beautiful, though. So quiet and peaceful. And the best part about this snow in the game, it doesn't accumulate. So you don't have to shovel it. I mean, I love snow. I love winter. But I don't like the shoveling part. We're getting up on the roof and cleaning out the gutters. That's the hassle, but I love walking in the snowfall. Especially at night when it's quiet. And you can hear every little thing. And the snow is falling around you. We have a path nearby. And why are we going so dang slow? Oh my gosh. 116 pounds, that's why. <laughs> Holy mackerel. This is going to take a while. Look at this. We have to cross the whole lake. Ay, ay, ay. Do we have, uh, how much sunlight do we have left? My gosh, I wanted to get back to camp office before the sun went down so we had some natural daylight to do some work. Because once the sun goes down, you can't, like, repair and do that kind of thing. And I don't want to use up my lamp oil. I want to save my lamp oil for emergencies and long treks and that kind of thing. But, man, this at this rate, we're never going to get there. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, we have a path near my house. It's about a quarter mile long, goes through the woods. It's kind of a narrow path. You know, like the trees and the bushes are pretty close close in. And when it snows, the, uh, the trees and the overhanging limbs and whatnot get heavy with snow, and they lean in even more. You know, they get lower and closer. So it's almost like walking through a tunnel. And it's awesome. I love it so much. But again, I don't like the snow, the shoveling part, <laughs> or cleaning off the car. I can live with off. I can live without that part. I just want to take hikes in the snow, and hunt and fish. It's also very fun. Yeah, I could definitely stay up here. Maybe in another time. Although right now it's pretty peaceful, huh? Without the wolves at our heels, anyway. Crazy wolves. Or hungry bears. Speaking of wolves, what the heck happened to all the wolves? There are no wolves here. It's so weird. Maybe they migrated. Pretty sure wolves don't migrate, though. I mean, they may follow a food source, but there's plenty of food here. Hmm. I don't know. It's a mystery, but there's a lot of mysteries here in Canada during this apocalyptic event. I've always been intrigued by wolves. I think they're pretty magnificent animals, and I wanted to study them when I was in college. So I took, um, I was studying biology and zoology. Well, I changed my major a lot. I think like maybe 10 times. Started with computer science and then economics. I know, right? Economics. Um, and then anthropology and then biology and zoology. A whole, well, I did a lot of ologies. Couldn't make up my mind. But anyway, I wanted to, um, when I finished college, I wanted to go and study wolves in Greenland, the white wolf in particular, arctic wolf, um, and live with them. Of course, that never materialized, but uh, <laughs> I still want to do it. We better eat. Well, you better eat, buddy. We don't want to lose that well-fed benefit. There we go. i got to keep that food in the belly there, buddy, and let's drink up. We're almost there. I see the flag from here. I hope we still have any time left in this episode. My gosh. All right, enough talking. I'm going to quit here, and I will be, we'll meet you guys at camp office. So hang tight. Be right back. 
All right, here we are, back at camp office with a little bit of sunlight left so we can see barely. I am going to drop, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting organized right now because we are, we're already running out of time here. But I'm going to drop these fresh wolf pets. Pet pets? <laughs> Two more pelts, so those are going to cure. These are still curing. I want to make that wolf jacket eventually. Yeah, I love wolves so much. I like killing them and stealing their pelts and turning them into coats. Great. That's how much I love wolves, right? Of course, this is a scenario. Survival scenario, so you got to do what you got to do. All right, now I can see. You got a little match here. Got some guts up here, too. Let's get a fire going. Oh, well. Let's get a fire started so we can see. And Oh, we don't have a book? Huh. All right, let's grab a book. I know this book's over here. There's one. Grab it. Oh, dropped it. Great. Uh, I got turned around. Will, where's the... There it is. <laughs> Looking for the stove. All right, once we get this fire going, we'll be able to see a little bit better. We got 95% chance. Shouldn't be too difficult. Come on. Oh, there you are. Hi, Will. I hear you. I know you're in there somewhere. It's about time. Jeez, that so did it. That did it. I was worried about you, Will. All right, let's throw a cedar firewood log on there. And you can put the match down now, buddy. Okay, so we got a little light to see by, and we have a whole bunch of inventory items I want to go through, especially some of the new stuff like the ragged combat pants. I'd like to repair those and see how they compare with the pants we're wearing. These combat boots look pretty good, um, among other things. And we got to dry off too, right? Now... Should I take this stuff off? Will it dry off faster if it's on the floor next to the fire? I mean, in real life it would. But I don't think it matters in the game. Well, let's try it anyway. I'm going to drop trow. Just, it's just the exterior stuff anyway, right? Whoop. Drop. Yeah, I'm just going to move stuff around a little bit. Put it by the fire. Warm it up. Yeah, look at that. That's what we're talking about in my little Canadian toque. Perfect. <laughs> this does remind me so much of going uh, on hunting trips and trips up north, um, skiing or whatever. Anything outdoors in the snow, being soaked and then coming in and laying everything out by the wood stove. This game does a really good job at simulating that. Let's throw some coal on the fire. Oh, we got to wait five minutes, do we? Whatever. All right, I'm going to wait five minutes and then I'm going to do some repair work. And we will take a look at the clothing here, see what we're going to go with, and then we'll, um, yeah, then we'll, we'll, we'll pick up in the morning. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right. Welcome back. So a little bit of time has passed. Still nighttime, but the moon is rising high in the sky, but everything seems to be dry here. Our jacket, the mucklucks, the work pants. A nice toque and the gauntlets have all dried off by the fire, which is pretty awesome. And we're going to go ahead and drink this right now, this tea before bed, because I think it's about time. I did repair the combat pants. Um, I think I put them away in the chest over there. We'll have to take a look at that stuff tomorrow, because I can, still can't see very well. So anyway, let's hop into bed. We'll take the lower bunk. You can take the top bunk. Uh, Will, I don't know where you're going to sleep, but, uh, well, we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Uh, hey, wait a second. <laughs> I slept on the floor. You guys had the bunks. What the heck? Could have sworn I climbed into that bed. Somebody shoved me off. All right. Anyway, so as I was saying, we're not going to worry about what to wear to fight the bear with. I'm just going to get redressed with the same stuff that I've been wearing all this time this is the good stuff the best stuff that we have and then we'll come up with a plan later for fighting the bear so this is just gonna have to do I wonder if i can drop any of this oh, gear really that yeah, stuff is heavy stuff is heavy isn't it oh my gosh see we were underweight and now we're back overweight so you know what it's gonna drop a bunch of food we have a lot of food we don't need all of the food just to take a quick walk down the road so to speak so, yeah, although, wait a minute, we should probably eat. Oh, get out of there. Yeah, let's have some breakfast. Um, just gonna eat a bunch of junk food. We don't have any meat or anything, so we're just gonna have to eat 
Zag nuts and beef jerky. And let's have a drink and let's boogie. Sorry about all the inventory shuffling and so forth and so on. This is kind of a walkie and a talkie episode and we haven't really accomplished much. But we're going to at least finish this gunshots quest today. So let's go do that. Out we go. And thank goodness it's not snowing anymore. As much as I love it, it is kind of a hassle. All right, we can sprint now a little bit. Let's go, Will. Man, it's been a long time since we've been able to move this fast. <laughs> Just want to get to that cabin and find out what all the hullabaloo is with this uh, with this forest talker locked inside. Couldn't sleep all last night thinking about those bullets and what he's going to use them for. Maybe we should have taken the bullets. But I felt like giving him a fair chance at survival, right? Plenty of deer around, but still no wolves. I have a feeling they're all heading over to the muskeg. <laughs> they're gonna ambush us as soon as we cross into the, uh, cross through the tunnel into the muskeg, aren't they? Sneaky devils. I knew I should have studied them more. Or at all. All right, here we are. Back at the cabin. Let's put the gun down. We'll go ahead. You do the talking. Oh, we're in. We're going in. Let's see if they left anything useful. He's gone. <laughs> He's just up and left. That stinker. I wanted to... Uh... Oh, deerskin pants. What the heck? Are you serious? Warm, supple, and tough. Offers a great combination of mobility and warmth. Where do they used to feel like the Mad Max of the North? They're amazing. They're 100%. Oh. Oh, there's a note. Forest Talker note. A note left for you by the Forest Talker in the lake cabin. Oh, did he make these things or something? You're kidding me. Hold on. I meant to read that. Picked it up too fast. Examine. Thank you for helping me. Not everyone would have done that. I left this item for you. It belonged to my friend. Hopefully you'll be able to make use of it. Maybe our paths will cross again. Wear dead man's pants? Ew. Gross. But they are amazing. Let me check those out again. Forest talker, forest talkery pants. Deerskin pants. Wow. Look at the protection on these things. That's one thing we need to think about that some of you had mentioned in the comments too when we fight the bear. We want to make sure that we have highest defense rating as possible so that we don't get torn to shreds, even though the clothing is going to get torn to shreds. So these are real nice, but they're, they're kind of heavy. I mean, four and a half pounds almost. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring them. We're gonna, obviously going to bring them. Um, I may not wear them to the musk keg, but... Once we're done with the bear, we'll certainly come back for them. All right, you know, I'm going to grab it. is getting kind of heavy. Yeah, yeah. I am going to bring a few books. Just bring them back to the cabin, uh, to cap office. Good for lighting fires without wasting uh, accelerant. I think we're going to need a lot of that right there. The, um, the antiseptic being attacked. We have to bring a lot of medical supplies <laughs> when we go fight that bear. Oh, here we go. This is perfect. We're getting a whole bunch of spare clothing. And this is good stuff, too. We got another Canadian toque and a uh, thin wool sweater. All right. All right. It's almost like um, Canada is setting us up for the, sh the showdown. Clash of the Titans. Or the Gargantuans, as it were. Do you remember the Gargantuans? If this is any good to eat. It's good. Grab it. Um, I think it was... Was it just called the Gargantuans or Battle of the Gargantuans? It was a creature double feature old monster movie back in the day. Two uh, giant, hairy, humanoidish creatures. One, uh, one was good, one was bad, and they fought. The Gargantuans was the name. <laughs> it was so odd, but I loved it. All right, I think we got everything here. I'm just gonna look in all the little corners here. You never know when there's a bullet. Man, I feel so fast now. Will, he's moving quick. Yeah, after that snail's pace across the ice, I feel like um, uh, Speedy Gonzales here. Uh, let's grab this. Six minutes with a hand. We need we need cloth for repairs. We're going to need a lot of cloth for repair work. Oh, I should sharpen up that knife, too. Yeah, some spare time. we got to do this. In 17 minutes. We're not going to do it right now. All right. I think we're good. 
All right, thanks, Forest Talker. So, all right, well then, I guess giving him the bullets is was the right thing to do. <laughs> all right, let's head out. At least, um, at least initially. Still don't know what he's going to do with those bullets, but hopefully he's just going to use them to protect himself. All right, I think there's one locked ca cabin left. We don't have the key for it, so we ain't going there. Oh, well, the body's gone. Did the deer eat it? Or did the wolves come back for it? Or did that guy grab his corpse and uh, carry it away? I don't recall if it was here when we came back, was it? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe his friend took off with it, buried it somewhere. Okay, we're going to head back to camp office now. And then get dressed for our showdown. The main event in the Muskeg. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be on our way, so... Alright, yeah, I'll meet you guys back at camp office, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So hang tight. Be right back. Alright, we're back at camp office, and now it's time to prepare to go to the Muskeg for the final showdown. Man versus Bear.